Ya estamos de regreso. We're back. Madam Vice President, eh, we have our next question over here. Christian eh, Galván comes from Wisconsin and has a question about reproductive health. Una pregunta sobre derecho reproductivo, salud reproductiva. Adelante, Christian. Buenas noches, vicepresidenta. Es un honor estar aquí. Como mujer, que es mi mayor orgullo en la vida, tengo una hija también. Quisiera preguntar, si llega a la presidencia, ¿qué papel jugarían las mujeres en su administración? ¿Y qué leyes estaría dispuesta a impulsar para regularizar el aborto? As a woman, which is the biggest pride in my life, I have a daughter, I would like to ask you, uh, what difference would it make if you become the first female president and what laws would you enact to make sure uh, abortion is uh, uh, regularizado, regular, regularized? That's the term she used. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we are in a situation right now where there are at least 20 states that have Trump abortion bans because when Donald Trump was president of the United States, he hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. They did as he intended. And now in these states, we see bans that criminalize doctors and nurses in Texas, up to prison and life for a doctor or nurse. Laws that make no exception for rape or incest, which means you're telling a survivor of a crime of a violation to their body that they have no right to make a decision about what happens to their body next, which is immoral. And what I know is I think most people believe that we should agree you don't have to abandon your faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling her what to do with her body. If she chooses, she will talk with her priest, her pastor, her rabbi, her imam, but not the government telling people what to do with their own body. And I feel very strongly about this. Our daughter is going to have fewer rights than my mother-in-law. In this year of our Lord, 2024. And when we talk about what makes for what is right and what is wrong, I think we agree that there are certain decisions, especially over heart and home, that the government should just not be making for us, that we can make them for ourselves. And so I feel very strongly about this. And I'll tell you, there are probably many people here and watching who rightly have made a decision that they do not believe in abortion. The point that I'm making is not about changing their mind about what's right for them or their family. It's simply saying the government shouldn't be making this decision. And the other point I would make is this. What I'm learning as I travel the country on this issue is that people are realizing they may, some who feel firmly about abortion, that they are against it, didn't realize that what's happening because of these laws and what Donald Trump did includes that people who are trying to get in vitro fertilization treatment, IVF, are finding it more difficult or being denied. What people aren't realizing is because of these laws, women are having miscarriages in parking lots. Women are being, I know I've met women who are, wanted to have a baby. They with their husband, go then out of an emergency because they're having a miscarriage to a hospital and denied care mm. because the doctors there are concerned they may be put in jail. I've met a couple of them who developed sepsis because they were denied care because of these laws. So as president of the United States, and if I am elected as the first woman president of the United States, I will proudly sign back into law the protections of Roe v. Wade, which basically just says it's the person's decision, not the government's decision. That, in essence, is what's behind my position. Gracias, Cristian. Thank you. Thank you so much.